I am so impressed by this town. And I didn't know what to expect to tell you the truth. every other fall. Artists can exhibit their works anywhere. Bars, parks, bridges, laundromats, auto body shops, everywhere. That's what makes it so much fun. Okay, this sculpture is a mailbox with a book inside and people have signed from all over the country so Dawn's gonna put ours down there and then she's gonna put it back in the mailbox. And the art can be anything in any medium. It's called Art Prize. It's every other year now in Grand Rapids. No one directs where the artists can exhibit, so cool things are all over. You open the Art Prize app and cast votes for your favorite. While in town, we got our friend Phil Tower to be on our stupid game show. So here we are in Michigan. Phil, now's your chance to win fabulous prizes in what we call Know Your State. Hi, Jim. You might win fabulous prizes on the vlog with Don and Jim. It's Know Your State. If you know the answer, hit the buzzer, and I will tell you whether you are right or wrong. Now, why is Sasquatch on the Michigan flag? Look in the, in the yellow part right there. Phil, what is the state bird of Michigan? Uh, that uh, uh, you have to hit the buzzer. Uh, Phil? The robin is correct. Name the person not from Michigan. Stevie Wonder. Charles Lindbergh, Iggy Pop, John Hamm. Charles uh, Lindbergh. Charles Lindbergh is from Michigan. It is John Hamm. You probably invented this, but what is the state motto? Uh, it, it, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm out. If you see a pleasant peninsula, yes, I then look about you. If you see a and pleasant peninsula, look about you. Circum <laughs> That's what it is. That's Terrible a pretty model. bad one. No matter where you stand in Michigan, you will never be farther than 85 miles from what? A body of water. That is correct. Very good. One of the Great Lakes. Although Michigan is called the Wolverine State, how many Wolverines are left in Wild Michigan? The answer would be zero. That is correct. There's no Wolverines in the Wolverine State. Yeah. There's none on the flag no, either. Wood radio lines. That's true. Is this a Wolverine? No. 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 I know that isn't. I'm a little disappointed you haven't researched this Sasquatch-like creature. At 10 cents, Michigan has the highest what in the U.S.? Phil Tower? Bottle and container return. That is correct, sir. Very good. What was the city of Novi before it got its name Novi? Northville. Stagecoach stop number six. <laughs> That's what it was. It was stagecoach stop no, number and, six. And, and, Michigan was the first state to abolish what in 1846? Phil death, Tower. Death penalty. Yes, sir. Michigan is the only state that touches four of the five Great Lakes. Name the four. You can do this, Phil. Huron. Mm -hmm. Erie. Mm -hmm. Michigan. Mm -hmm. Superior. Very good. Residents of the UP are jokingly called what? Piece of cake. They're called youpers. Youpers. Yeah, very good. I think you know your state, Phil, I and you've I won a fabulous prize. Thank you. So thanks for playing. Know your state. Thank you very much, Jim. Go, go Michigan. Go blue. Know your state. The state of Michigan's always been a curiosity for me. 
because while this is the actual state, this thing across the water up here is also the actual state. How did that happen? Okay, when Ohio became a state in 1802, it had its borders, the top, the bottom, and the sides. But when Congress set up Michigan's borders three years later, that survey said this part of Ohio belonged to Michigan. The Michigan-Ohio War of 1835 and 36, which was really a skirmish, and only one person was kind of injured with a penknife, still was serious business. Each side lined up on the other side of the Maumee River and shots were fired in the air and insults were hurled at each other. Hey, Michigan! Why did Michigan change their playing field from grass to artificial turf to keep the Michigan cheerleaders from grazing at halftime? <laughs> hey, Ohio! How do you get an Ohio State grad off your porch? Pay him for the pizza! <laughs> yeah, that kind of ugly. Michigan started collecting taxes here. They founded a new city called Toledo here in the disputed area. Both sides went to President Andrew Jackson to settle this, and because Ohio was a swing state in elections, Ohio got the land. And as a compromise, Michigan was given the Upper Peninsula. And that's why the state looks like this in two pieces. In 1915, they had another border survey done. Both state governors, Ferris and Willis, shook hands on a truce over the new state line marker. Let's have coffee sometime. And I brought you this box of assortments. Oh, is there a bear claw? Why, yes, I saved this one just for you. But the belly aching continued. And in 1973, the Supreme Court redrew the state line for the final time to cut through the center of this tiny 190 foot island, half for Michigan, half for Ohio. Now you know why the Michigan Ohio War continues every year to this day. What you see? Grand Rapids, you see Grand Rapids, the river, oh, and look, yeah. kitchen by Wolfgang Puck. Grand Rapids is the bridge city. If you're a hiker or a runner, the Grand River Edges Trail runs in loops on both banks of the Grand. There's a popular unofficial Grand Rapids Bridge Walk, a nice five mile trek across six of the seven downtown bridges. A few are pedestrian only bridges, and everyone's favorite is the pedestrian blue bridge. Get step by step directions when you do a Google search for how to do the Grand Rapids Bridge Walk. What is that orb? I don't know. Should I take a picture and ask John what it yeah, is? Yeah, let's find out what that is. I forgot until I was here that a U.S. president came from Grand Rapids. Now bear with me on this. You ready? This is Richard Nixon, the 37th president. He had a vice president, Spiro Agnew. Yes, Spiro, who resigned after pleading no contest to tax evasion. Can't get these guys to stand up right. Back then, as a joke, some guy made the Spiro Agnew watch. Celebrities used to wear these. It was like you were one of the cool people in on the joke if you had one. But I digress. To replace Agnew, Nixon chose a congressman from Grand Rapids to be the new vice president. An important job if something should happen to the actual president. But what are the odds that it happened? Within months deep in the Watergate scandal, President Nixon became the first president to do this. I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Vice President Ford will be sworn in as president at that hour in this office. Look, in the Ford Museum, these are the actual tools used by the Watergate burglars, still tagged as government evidence. Gerald Ford had gone from Michigan congressman to vice president to president of the United States in just nine months. I, Gerald R. Ford, do solemnly swear. He was the target of two assassination attempts, both in 1975 and both by women. The FBI grabbed a former follower of Charles Manson, Squeaky Frome, with this pistol. This is the actual gun. She's out of prison now. Two weeks later, Sarah Jane Moore got a shot off at the president and missed by inches. She was in prison for 32 years. Mrs. Ford was one of the most popular first ladies in U.S. history. She used her position to speak out about having breast cancer and gain respect and affection from the American people. She lobbied hard for women's
women's rights and the Equal Rights Amendment and her openness about abusing alcohol and dependency on pain medication, all as a result of her breast cancer, led to the opening of the famous Betty Ford Treatment Facility for Dependency in California. If you're a star and you're addicted, you often go there. I might go there for my dependency on donuts and pies. So I look on Wikipedia for a picture of President Ford, and here he is speaking at the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island, October 31st in the 1970s. The mind-blowing thing is, I was little and I was there. Look, here's my ticket, October 31st. What are the odds that I hadn't thrown this out? Oh, I know why. I knew I'd be making a blog decades later after forgetting President Ford came from Grand Rapids. Somewhere among these kids are my dad, me, and my friend Chris from middle school. And sure enough, there's Chris's head. So me and my father must be right next to him, somewhere behind these kids. Gerald Ford, the 38th President of the United States, is a son of Grand Rapids and a damn fine bobblehead. Wow, that's awesome. Here's Obama. These are created by royal baubles. Do you need any? No, I have uh, quite a few. Oh my Grand Rapids is also Beer City, USA. The Beer City Ale Trail boasts 80 plus breweries. That's more incredible craft beer per square mile than just about anywhere else on earth. John took us to Founders for... The Founders Breakfast Stout with uh, chocolate and coffee in it. Beer with nice. chocolate and coffee? We went right with them on the Founders Brewery Tour. How do you carve up after a beer tour? John recommended Marge's Donut Den in Wyoming, Michigan. Where you meet old friends and make new ones. Here's Marge. The box of their best, we headed to Cutlerville. There's even a park here called Cutler Park, which seems like the ideal place to eat donuts. So let's do that. We get together so rarely to talk about the art of the yeast circle. Yeast circle. Yeah. Chocolate and peanut butter. Peanut butter is kind of creamy, so let's see. Oh, traditional donut. Frosting is delicious. How's that bacon going, John? Oh, bacon's excellent. Breakfast of champions. Traditional glazed. They said it's their best seller. It's a perfect donut. Does it do everything a donut should do? It does. Lemonville, Bismarck. A Bismarck? Nice frosting, good solid donut. What makes it a Bismarck? According to the dictionary, a Bismarck generally is meaning a round raised donut, but not cakey, topped with sugar or glazed frosting and filled with buttercream or jelly. To use it in a sentence, the night duty officer pursuant to the perpetration of the alleged perpetrator did forthwith at the precinct house reach for the last Bismarck. Now this is their other bestseller, Apple which you are eating fritter. half. Oh, I could really taste the apples now. It's very moist inside. Yeah, you can get the hint of cinnamon in there. Solid. No wonder why Marge's is best donuts in West Michigan. I would give Marge's donuts two thumbs up. Wow. No, I've confirmed it. We say goodbye to Cutler Park. Many donuts were eaten here. And then on the way out, I saw this. It's blasphemy. GD Rapids? What, they couldn't fit grand on the sign? Come on, fellas. I can fit grand on that sign. Let's see, put this here, do this. Look at that, no problem. And fixed. Remember, none of this is sponsored. We're just telling you we recommend Sovngarde where we had dinner with the gang before heading to the airport. Time, a direct flight back to New York and a beautiful night to come home. Remember, we're just starting on YouTube, so if you'd like to help us grow, please hit subscribe and give it a like. And we'll see you soon in the next one.